Thank you. Well, then. Which God? Can I join the conversation, yeah, I, too? Absolutely. Okay, uh, cool. I have irrefutable evidence of God. Wait, did you say irrefutable? Did you, you said irrefutable evidence for God? Irrefutable evidence for God. Oh, I'm excited. Cool. Well, Come on, we, I'm excited. We won't, we won't have to say anything. Yeah. Then. All right, go for it. Absolutely. Uh, I think this ties into your, uh, you said you were a Baptist, correct? Once upon a time, yeah. I was a born again Christian. Okay. okay. I thank you for saying that. Born again Christian. Okay. So I would say that the irrefutable evidence of God, have you ever heard of the Acts 238 experience? I don't know. Oh my gosh. What, that's ringing a bell, okay. dude. You got to keep going because I'm. Okay, sure. Uh, Acts 238. Uh, Peter said, be baptized in Jesus' name and uh, receive the Holy Spirit uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's the new birth experience, according to the Bible. That's the new birth experience. Uh, okay. I think a lot of times where people get it a little bit maybe uh, confused is that they think that there's another form of salvation somewhere else in the scriptures. But the scriptures teach that. And when you have that experience, that is the uh, proof of God's existence. So the problem is, is that if you pick up, for example, a red letter edition of the Bible where you can see the words that are actually attributed to Jesus, the passage mm -hmm. in Acts is not, and yet Jesus is directly asked, what must I do to be saved? And then Jesus answers that question. So how do you reconcile what Jesus said about what must one do to be saved with the Acts 238 passage? Sure. Uh, if you look at all four Gospels, Jesus did say that you have to be born again. You have to be born of the water. That's the baptism in Jesus' name and of the Spirit. That's John, I do believe, 3, 5. And, uh, no, but I'm, I'm talking about when Jesus is specifically asked, what must I do to be saved? What did Jesus say? Mm -hmm. uh, I can't recall specifically. He said, that. keep the commandments. And then the person asked, I've, I've, I've done this all my days. What else? And Jesus said, okay, but, sell but, your but, belongings and give the money to the poor. Correct. Okay, that that's the, what Jesus says to do to be saved. At no point when Jesus is asked what somebody must do to be saved, does he say anything about baptism or Holy Spirit or any of that? And so... He actually does. No, no, not when he's directly asked, what must I do to be saved? That occurs once. But anyway, we have to. I, I'm going to set that aside because... We're still talking about, you're talking about a passage in the Bible that gives a description of, uh, of requirements for salvation. And I'm pointing out that there's a different mm -hmm. one directly from the horse's mouth, supposedly, that differs. But you said you had irrefutable uh, proof or evidence for God. So I, we should get to that. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I really liked that last thing that was going on. That was fun. It, we can make it back to that, but yeah, I, want, yeah. I want the irrefutable evidence for God. Yeah, seriously. I mean, convert us. Uh, yeah, we've, yeah. We've, we've got other things that we could do on Sundays. Sure, because a lot of times people have arguments for God, but until you experience the Acts 238 experience, that his holy power to convert you is the experience to let you know that he's real. Uh, okay, so I, I've been baptized. He's talking about spe in Jesus specifically. Name? Yes, we've both been yes. baptized in Jesus' name. So I'm a Baptist or was, a child, was a Baptist. Okay. That's the thing. And as a teenager, I was anointed with oils. I was but what I didn't do was hold. speak in tongues. Is that an element that okay. you're saying is required for salvation? Yes. Okay. Yes, so yeah. you have a doctrine that departs from most of the rest because most of the rest of Christian doctrines don't require speaking in tongues. However, is it speaking? I, I'm, here's the question. Is speaking in tongues the irrefutable evidence for God that you're talking about? Both that and the baptism in Jesus' name. Okay, baptism, in, I can baptize Eric in Jesus' name right now. That is no, in no way proof of a God or even evidence for a God. Do, a, person doing, a person doing something in the name of God is not in any way evidence for the name of God, for God. Because I could baptize Eric in the name of Lord Voldemort. I could baptize Eric in any name. So that's not evidence for God. Also, speaking in tongues is not evidence for God. It's called glossolalia. It is a, uh, in, in some cases, it is a symptom of some mental conditions, but also in many cases, it's just faked. So, for example, I had a friend who was uh, best friends with a Pentecostal, and Pentecostals had this requirement that at age 13, you demonstrate that you have been filled with the Spirit by actually speaking in tongues. I think it's age 13. It's around there. And so he's standing up in front of the church. He's standing up in front of the church, 
and they're expecting him to speak in tongues. And he looks at the pastor and he says, I don't know what to do. And the pastor says, just fake it. We all do. Now, I'm not saying everybody fakes it. That's not the point. The point is sure. it, it can be faked. It has been faked. Sure. And so there is no way for somebody like me to observe someone speaking in tongues and be able to tell at all whether they are actually speaking in a heavenly language in, case, in, in the case that that would be evidence for a God or if they are just babbling incoherently. Now, from what we know... You need the experience yourself. Yeah, you know, so what you're basically arguing is that one must experience God to have the evidence for God. And if that's, if that's true, then it's not evidence for God because it doesn't serve as, as proof for anybody. Revelation is, yeah. revelation is necessarily first person. To everybody else, it's hearsay. That's a la David Hume. The thing is, even for the first person, let's say you feel elated, you feel an experience, as we both have in mm -hmm. church, and the people around you are saying, ah, that's being filled with the Holy Spirit. I was convinced that I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit while I was in church. Oh. I was mistaken. There is no way for any individual human being, flawed thinker, to take their experience and say, hmm, it feels like what's been described as being filled with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit therefore it is, and therefore I'm rationally justified in believing in a God. That cannot happen. That's exactly the same as someone saying, I saw a ghost, therefore this is evidence of the supernatural. That is flawed. I'll tell you what, uh, I think you have a somewhat of a background in these scriptures. I would love to have some type of debate uh, with you uh, about the scriptures. Uh, would you be interested in, interested in that, Matt? I, we're on the show. It happens all the time. Okay. If you're so, talking about uh, like a big public formal debate, well, yeah, you can pay me. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> um, I mean, th that's that's okay. one of the ways I make my living is doing big debates. This is the spot where you get to call sure. and debate us for free. Yep. Sure, absolutely. So let me go back to that very quickly. You said you were a Baptist, but they do not believe in the baptism in Jesus' name. Uh, y yes, we did. Uh, no, no. You're no, telling no. me, okay, th this is a huge mistake here, Patrick, for you to tell me what, that I didn't believe the thing I'm fucking telling you I believed, the thing that is part of the doctrine. They skipped right over the, uh, the, my, my church. You might be mistaken. What church did you go to, Eric? I might be mistaken about what I believed? Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Hold on. Yeah. So, do, That's, do you understand I'm done. what? Yeah. Do you understand what no true Scotsman is? Do you know what that argument is? What the what? Can you repeat that? Please? No true Scotsman. No true Scotsman. Yes, yes, I'm aware of that. Okay. What is that? That is when someone says that says that this is uh, what somebody is like a Scotsman pour sugar over his porridge or whatever the case may be. And then when somebody does not, they say no true Scotsman would do that. But the problem with that is that where is the mode of salvation found in the Bible? Salvation is Hold found on. in Acts 2.38. I, I didn't ask you no, anything you about say. salvation. I asked you if you know what no true Scotsman is. And you, you sure. tacked that on at the end. What you are saying is no true Christian. I don't care. Why do you think we would you care don't. about this minutia? Why? Why not? Because it's very important. We're talking about salvation. Okay, and you say that the Acts 2.38 one is there, and I'm talking about what Jesus said earlier. So why do you prioritize Paul? Why do you, pri why do you prioritize Paul over Jesus? Okay, there are different dispensations. That was under the law. Jesus was under the law. We are now, now under grace after Jesus died. So now the new th Acts 2.38 experience is the plan of salvation. Under the law, we had to offer up sacrifices. So when sacrifices you're not talking about, in, You're not talking about the same thing I'm talking about. I asked, I, am. I asked why you prioritize Paul over Jesus. They both said the same thing, but... No, they didn't. Under different dispensations. Yes, they did. No, and there's not different dispensations after Jesus. Jesus is the end of that. And if, and if, the, if Jesus said something, are you saying that Paul can come along and change it? No, I'm saying that... Then, then why don't we stick either. with what Jesus supposedly said? Sure, he said, you must be born of the water and of the Spirit in John. I do believe John 3, 5. 
I, I understand that. And I'm also, I also mm -hmm. pointed out the other passage. So the thing is, the subject of what must I do to be saved is, is called soteriology. And it is the single point of contention between many different Christian denominations and doctrines. Sure. Okay? Sure. So what you're doing is calling in to say that you're right, and you called in to say that I don't know what I used to believe, and that I'm wrong about what Baptists believe. And so you are absolutely, as Eric pointed out, engaged in the no true Scotsman fallacy. And I don't give a rat's ass because what you called in to talk about was irrefutable evidence for the existence of God. And we have not heard that yet. Not about doctrine. We can, we can argue different doctrines all day. It's probably better for you to go argue sure. with other Christians. One of my favorite debates of all time was Matt Slick and Jesse, what's his name? Uh, sorry, Jesse, who sat around and quoted the Bible to each other for 30 minutes and never once came to agreement uh -huh. and never once exposed where the other one was wrong, which is why we have over a thousand, I happy to. thousand denominations. I know that you are have Christian. debated I know you have debated Matt Slick. He does not believe in Acts 238. I would be happy to... I don't care what that. Matt Slick... Believe. Why, why can you not focus on the issue? What is the irrefutable evidence sure. for God? Okay, Acts 238. But let me ask you... Holy this. shit, you you're giving us blue balls, dude. Can, can I... I... <laughs> Okay, so Acts, so Acts two thirty eight. Acts two thirty eight is a passage in a book. It is not evidence for shit. Okay, do you believe in evolution? <laughs> oh, this is precious. Oh, so here's oh. what here's what I believe. Yes, I accept that evolution by means of natural selection is the best explanation for the diversity of life on the planet. Okay. And let me show you how there is no evidence for evolution. Oh, Darwinian evolution. So, so oh. you realize, of course, that we have DNA and we've identified chromosome two in the fusing that shows common ancestry with other animals, and that the bulk of all biology, all actual science. Are you a scientist? Are you a biologist? I have a bachelor of science in biology, and I'm working on my master's in biomedical sciences. Sweet. So you're going to say there's no evidence for evolution. Absolutely no evidence whatsoever. Dinosaur fossils don't do it? Yes. Tiktaalik doesn't do it? do it? They tell you they're dead. Tick fossils tell you that they're dead. Yes, and, and they're no longer here, and they also can tell you around what time frame they lived, and that allows you to make predictions about what you might find in other rock layers, like when we predicted to find Tiktaalik, and then we found it. Let me ask you this. What is science? Science is something that we can test, something that we can test, demonstrate, or observe. When have we ever observed anything that's transferring not, or... That's not what science is. And by the way, when it comes to... Sure to it is. No, it's not. S science is, it comes from, from the word knowledge, essentially. But science is a collection of methods by which we come up with the best tentative conclusions about the way the world works. That's what science... Okay, does that include guessing? Does it include guessing? Well, science yeah. is, in, is, by definition, an inferential process. I, now, we have is there occasionally guessing, invol is there guessing involved? Of course there is. there is. There is supposition involved, which then goes out and gets tested and verified to the best of our ability and then sent to peer, peer review to make sure that we can confirm and repeat and attempt to falsify the findings. It's not just Correct. a guess, and therefore it is. And that has all been we done. That has all been done. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hold on. How, how, how? No, 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 no. <laughs> Repeating something does not mean we have to recreate a dinosaur. Repeating the findings is about testing the accuracy of the findings, where we determine how old something is, where we determine whether, whether, or not, whether or not two things are genetically similar enough to possibly have common ancestry. And then you build a model that explains the most facts and that does not include things that would disprove it. You said... Okay. Now, hang on. You said you had irrefutable evidence for God, and now you're claiming there is no evidence for evolution. Absolutely. Okay. Because those now things are absolutely this. related. You said you have a degree oh, in this? How did you get the... Did, did you go to upstairs college? Where did you go? Well, let me ask you this. What university what do you go to? Organisms? What's were that? Were they single-celled organisms? Were they single-celled oh, organisms, the first organisms? Were the single-celled organisms the first organisms? The first organisms, yes. Well, uh, whether or not it qualified as a cell, I'm not completely sure. But what difference does okay. it make? What difference does it make? It makes a big no, 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 difference. No, stop. Stop. 
Here, here's that. the thing. I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you get to that. But when you say okay. there's no evolution, there's no evidence for evolution, and then you come up with questions or or uh, other things. How does that demonstrate that there's no evidence for evolution? I'm showing you through the process of looking at the data. No, you're not. You are cherry picking an example that you think dis you're cherry picking an example you think disproves evolution, which is irrelevant to whether or not there's a god. It's irrelevant to whether or not you have irrefutable evidence for a god, and it's irrelevant to whether or not there's no evidence for evolution. You are cherry picking something ask out. This. Okay, ask me that. Were, were the first organisms humans? No. Okay. So, how did we get to humans? We don't have any evidence of how something can evolve into something from a single-celled organism into a multicellular organism. I... That is the proof that evolution is false, friends. Thanks for calling. Dear Diary, today, Matt was more patient than me. Not much. This is a first. I would have hung up on him. I did. No, I would have hung up on him earlier. Well, I'm rubbing off on you. Uh, yeah, um, don't, don't do that on the show. <laughs> um, 